Hi there, I've just been experimenting with making spear thistle cordage. Now there had been some foliage cleared near my place of work and one of the things that was hacked was uh, some spear thistles. They were sort of medium sized ones, about three feet tall and broken up into several pieces. But I thought looking at it that I might be able to make some cordage out of it and here's what I found out. What a spear thistle normally looks like. It's how the council trim it in an urban setting. But look at those fibres just there. I'm going to take some of these away and see if they make any cordage. As these have been butchered quite a while, what I'm actually going to do, you can see the threads here look, I'm going to try and just tease them off with just an everyday eating knife but I'm also going to try soaking them as well. And you can see just with these ones I've got off here it's just scraping the knife across the top to get all the excess material off but there's some really good threads to be had here. There they are soaking as well they're also got a little bit mouldy where I gathered them on a wet day. So I'll split it a bit like you do a nettle to get the fibre out and open it up like that so it's got pith inside which I dare say if it were fresh would just come straight out but Actually, that's scraping off quite easily. And I guess on the other side, yeah, look at that, it's coming off nice and easily. This is a bit like the preparation that you do for horseradish. And I had a, a, a bow drill session with uh, some cordage I made out of that. Hold on to the threads or you will start losing them. Gently, gently. Fit that little ant out of the way. Go on, off you go. The ones are an ever-present danger on these you have to be careful now having said that some of them have gone moldy that's actually worked quite well it's almost retted them which is a sort of slow soaking process you do to get the glue off everything from nettles to lime bass cordage and you can see where i scrape this the white of the fibers is showing through really well i'm going to give them a wash in the sink to try and get some of the fibers away from the stuff that i don't want but uh, there's not too much left and it is coming on so I've got a fairly decent amount here. It's not perfectly clean, but this is only an experiment. And I could have got more out of the little bit of process, but I have to be honest, my back was aching leaning over the sink. Now, what I'm also going to do is just have a quick look through all the waste I've got there, because those light bits are fibres that have obviously just been scraped away. OK, I'll let it have a little dry out overnight. I've got a glass of water ready here in case it needs moistening, but I think it should be all right because it feels quite supple. Now, I did have a look on the internet to see if there's anything about uh, thistle cordage. There is. Uh, it's probably not a lot that's original out there in the bushcraft world, but I hadn't seen any of that, and I just happened to see the broken cordage sticking out of the, uh, the thistles that had been cut. So I've discovered it through that route, and what if? So without further ado, let's get making some cordage. I've got that inbound, so this is really going to focus my mind to getting this cordage done as quickly as possible. As I'm getting towards the end, I've got a good few inches uh, made. I'll show you this in close-up. So you twist twice like that, twist twice and then over like that, twist twice, over like that, twist twice, over like that. And if you're introducing a bunch, you put it in there, and what I also do is bend the end over and then twist and over like that to join it in. So I've ended up with a few inches of the uh, cordage there. It feels quite strong along its length, but I think like the horseradish cordage, a braging might be a problem if I was using it for a bow drill. But nevertheless, for something that I thought, oh, what if? It's been a useful little experiment.